Morning boys and girls. Electronic rider aids. What are they? First, let's look at what they're not. On the Harley Davidson Riders Club of Great Britain, a rider wrote to me, you should blag a shot of someone's KTM and have a good fiddle with all the rider modes. You'll find the novelty soon wears off and they become just a distraction. Well, that may or may not be true, but I want to make a distinction for this video between the rider modes and the electronic rider aids. Now, through the engine management systems, the rider modes also influence the ABS, for instance. But we want to recognise that the engine management systems are separate from the electronic rider aids. Bosch call the electronic rider aids Motorcycle Stability Control, or MSC. In 2020, Charlie Keefe, writing for the Carol Nash website, says Bosch are a world leader in the motorcycle stability control systems. So Bosch is the website that we're going to turn to. Now, electronic rider aids can be broken down into three areas. There are traction and braking aids, there are motorcycle hold aids, and there are the radar-based aids. Taking the first of those, traction and braking aids, Bosch has rear wheel lift-up control. It says this reduces the pressure on the front wheel to keep the rear wheel on the ground. When braking sharply on a motorcycle, the wheel load shifts in the direction of the front wheel. This can lead to the rear wheel lifting up off the road. The rear wheel lift-up control reduces the brake pressure on the front wheel. This keeps the rear wheel on the ground and significantly reduces the chance of a rollover occurring. Next in this section is the traction control. Bosch says this regulates the maximum engine torque when the rear wheel spins during vigorous acceleration. Traction control ensures that the rear wheel does not spin when accelerating hard. It controls the maximum engine torque to ensure optimal transfer from the driving force to the road. Next, Bosch has wheelie control. The system uses the pitch rate, the pitch angle and the wheel acceleration. The function also controls engine torque to ensure vehicle stability. Wheelie control regulates engine torque in order to prevent the front wheel from lifting up uncontrollably and, at the same time, to ensure maximum possible acceleration. Bosch also has off-road control, which is an ABS-based system. They said, the standard ABS was not able to cope on sand or loose surfaces, so Bosch has developed a special off-road control. Off-road control provides optimum braking performance on off-road terrain without compromising the typical off-road feel. The ABS function is only active on the front wheel. It allows a higher level of deceleration without impacting stability. The rider can lock the rear wheel intentionally and drift or pull the rear wheel around on hairpin curves. Next, Bosch has the Cornering Combined Electronic Braking System, or CABS to you and me. Bosch says this system is concerned with the brake force distribution, which isn't hugely informative. Fortunately, the Harley video does offer us a good illustration of how this works. Cornering Enhanced ABS optimizes brake pressure based on lean angle to deliver the best possible braking performance. When braking on a curve, the system calculates how much traction is available and adjusts the maximum brake pressure to preserve lateral grip. This helps the rider maintain course through the apex of a curve and keep the motorcycle on the intended path. It also helps reduce the risk of a low side crash, which can occur while cornering when too much brake pressure is applied relative to the available traction. The next two items we're going to lump together. They're rear wheel slide control 
This allows and controls a certain rear wheel sliding during hard braking in racetrack situations, says Bosch. And there's launch control. This supports a fast launch on the racetrack. Since these two systems are specifically for the racetrack, we're going to gloss over them. We're looking at the systems for the road here. The last category in the traction and braking aids is the cornering drag torque control. Triumph call this a torque assist clutch, and in Harley speak it's a slipper clutch. Bosch says this counteracts critical situations that arise when drive torque suddenly increases or drops. That's not brilliantly helpful. I have scoured the interweb for a decent video on this, but they're very, very technical, and frankly, I don't understand them. Suffice us to say, without it, on my old Sportster, if I changed down gear quickly, I used to often skid the back wheel. And this, I think, is because the engine was spinning faster than the rear wheel, and inevitably, at some point, it loses traction and skids a little bit. So, I rued the fact that it wasn't there. The next category is motorcycle hold aids. These are all part of the Bosch MSC. First, Bosch has hill hold control. This automatically holds the brakes on based on the information from the inertial measurement unit. Starting a heavy motorcycle on a slope is not easy. Hill hold control continues to hold the brake pressure constant after the rider has released the brake. This prevents the motorcycle from rolling back unintentionally when riding off. Next we have the vehicle hold control. This makes handling large and heavy two-wheelers easier not only when starting on a slope. A Harley video illustrates this quite nicely. Taking off with a heavy motorcycle on a slope can make it difficult to coordinate the brake, throttle, and clutch. Activated by a firm application of the front or rear brake after the motorcycle is stopped, vehicle hold control applies and holds rear brake pressure after the rider has released the brakes. This prevents the motorcycle from rolling unintentionally, letting the rider focus on balance and control operation to ride away smoothly. Lastly, we have the slope-dependent control. Bosch says this optimizes brake performance according to the road slope situation. Again, I couldn't get a decent video of this, so if we assume that slope dependent control is an amalgamation and a development of hill hold control and vehicle hold control, we've got to be part way there, haven't we? The last section of electronic rider aids is the radar based aids. This is not part of the Bosch MSC, this is part of Bosch's advanced rider assistance system or ARAS, the first of which is Adaptive Cruise Control, or ACC. This adjusts the vehicle's speed to the flow of traffic to maintain the correct distance from the vehicle in front. The Adaptive Cruise Control function controls the speed of the motorcycle and the distance to the vehicle ahead. The system can be activated with a switch on the handlebar and is using the front radar sensor. When a vehicle ahead drives slower, the motorcycle speed is adjusting to the preceding vehicle in order to maintain a safe distance. The display instrument keeps the rider permanently informed of the current status. This function reduces the stress of riding, especially in dense traffic, and it can avoid rear-end collisions. Forward collision warning function constantly monitors the distance to the vehicle in front. If the situation becomes critical, the system emits a visual, acoustic, or haptic warning to the rider. The timing of the warning takes into account the rider's reaction time and the time required for decelerating the vehicle so that the situation remains as safe as possible. The last of the radar-based aids is the blind spot detection. Bosch says, whenever there is a vehicle in the rider's blind spot, the technology warns them by way of an optical sensor, for example, in the rear view mirror. The 
blind spot detection function uses the rear radar sensor, which constantly monitors the back of the bike. It supplies information to the rider when another vehicle is in the blind spot or a faster vehicle is approaching in a neighboring lane. This allows us to observe a, a simple hierarchy. At the bottom, so to speak, there's ABS, traction control and such like. This is the most basic sort of electronic rider aid. These are generally governed by the engine management systems. Next up, we have the cornering enhanced systems like CABS or wheelie control and so on. This uses an IMU, which measures pitch and yaw and such like, to make a more advanced system. A key ingredient to the cornering enhanced systems is the inertial measurement unit. Charlie Keefe, again writing in Carol Nash, he says, an IMU uses a technology referred to as a microelectronic mechanical systems or MEMS. This is a tiny mass that sits on microscopic springs made of silicon inside a vacuum. The IMU gathers all the information and informs the ABS, engine management and even the suspension. So top of our hierarchy are the radar based aids. They include adaptive cruise control and blind spot detection and such and they really are as good as it gets. Now in the real world we can observe these systems in various models. For instance Harley Davidson's new motorcycle the Nightster. It has no IMU, it has no inertial measurement unit. But it does have traction control, it has an ABS system and it has a slipper clutch. But it has no cornering enhancement, so it's a more basic system. It's certainly more advanced than the old Evo Sportster that I had, which only had ABS. But it's still basic. If we compare that to the Triumph Speedmaster, the bike I've got now, while that also has no IMU, it does have traction control, ABS, cruise control and a slipper clutch but it still has no cornering enhanced systems. If we move up the model to the Triumph Rocket, now that does have the IMU. Interestingly, this IMU is not a Bosch system at all. It comes from Continental, which came as a surprise to me. I thought they only made tyres. But the Triumph Rocket's IMU, it does have the cornering enhanced systems like cornering ABS and so on. But there is even a level higher than this. If we go to the Harley Street Glide, this does have the cornering enhanced systems. Back in the day, this was RDRS. Nowadays, Harley call it Rider Safety Enhancements. This IMU even has a cornering slipper clutch and cornering traction control. This makes it better even than the Rocket. Now, you might wonder about the cost of these systems, given that they're so complicated and so powerful. Well, in 2020... Harley-Davidson introduced RDRS as a £1,000 option on their big tourers. Generally speaking, those tourers start at around the £25,000 mark. So a £1,000 cost penalty, that's not very much on a £25,000 bike. So you think, that's all good. Everything in the garden's rosy. They're absolutely wonderful. Everybody will love electronic rider aids. Oh no! There are many dissenters, many people who dislike electronic rider aids for whatever reason, but I've found, talking to people in person, at dealerships, and dealers themselves, and on news groups and so on, or forums as they are nowadays, I've found these dissenters fall into two groups, the sceptics and the luddites. The sceptics, they simply doubt the effectiveness of electronic rider aids at all. On the Triumph Rat forums, one rider wrote to me, The fact that the bike will stand up when the brakes are applied in a corner means that one would be in a ditch or under the wheels of a truck before ABS had a chance to do much. Now this sceptical, almost cynical outlook really has a historical base because, as Charlie Keefe says, you can trace traction control and ABS back to the late 1980s and 1990s. They were crude and they didn't work very well. And I might add, actually, they were also very heavy. And many sceptics generally think, well, they were bad then, they must be bad now. But that's not true. The electronics generally and electronic rider aids have advanced massively in 40 years. And we need to remember that a lot of these systems were developed directly from the racetrack. Formula One 
and MotoGP specifically. Indeed, they are so effective, these systems, that they can make a slow racer fast. And this is unfair. We want to watch racing, we want to see the best racer, not the best electronic package. We want to see the cars and bikes sliding. We want to see wheel spins. Do you remember when there was tyre smoke off the line? Not anymore. Traction control and launch control are so effective that is eliminated. So, essentially the sceptics are wrong. These systems are excellent. Indeed, they are so effective, they are so good, that on the racetrack they often end up getting banned. The other group of dissenters are the Luddites, the technology haters. Google's definition of Luddite is a person opposed to new technology or ways of thinking, adding they're small-minded in resisting progress. The word Luddite comes from the early 19th century when workers were losing their livelihoods to mostly steam-powered machines. They took their fight literally to the extreme using violence and even destroying machines often. Uh, and you can understand why they were starving. Literally, they had no work, no money. But the fight they were fighting was hopeless. You can't stop progress, and really neither should you. So for me, well, I'm a Harley fan, so I must have some Luddite tendencies, mustn't I? Now the trouble with biker Luddites is that they are often aggressive. It's not enough that they hate technology. They want me to hate technology too. And if I don't hate technology, they hate me. Now aggressive Luddite comments always come from males, mostly older males. The most offensive of these are behaving like 12 year old children, like playground bullies. My dad's bigger than your dad. Now younger riders, they're more used to electronics generally and to electronic rider aids, so they're much less likely to be aggressively Luddite. As it happens, I have never seen or heard a lady biker act like a 12 year old playground bully. And you know what, we shouldn't put up with it. We shouldn't engage, there is no point in trying to argue the toss with a 12 year old bully. Just report the post. In most forums and on YouTube there's a little box you can tick, report post, just report it and leave it at that. So there is one question left that we have to answer I think, and that is, do these rider electronics, do they get in the way of the actual riding? Back in 2021, Kevin Cameron, writing in Cycle World, said, A frequent theme of reader commentary concerns the idea that something valuable is lost from the motorcycle experience when the various electronic interventions seek to enhance human abilities. Debate over rider aids has occasionally assumed an almost moralistic tone, as if accepting outside help in riding constituted theft of personal sovereignty. I carry my own water. Well, you can carry your own water if you want to. You're perfectly entitled. You are allowed. But if I want my water metered out and dispensed into a suitable vessel automatically, I'm allowed as well. But a water carrier is not allowed to hate a non-carrier. Not on this channel. Someone behaving like a 12-year-old playground bully, they're going to get their comments reported and they will be hidden from my channel forevermore. This may not change the whole interweb, but if only a few forums and a few YouTube channels are cleaned up, that's got to be a good start. Cheerio.